<laughs> hey everyone, Fear Crawler here. Welcome to the video. Today's video topic is testimonies, which I guess if I had to compare it to something modern would be kind of like YouTube comments. Speaking of which, Mini Crawler and I are going to share some of those YouTube comments that some of you viewers have left on our videos for you right now. Oh, here's one for you, Mini Crawler. Mini Crawler is adorable. Yes, he is. I love every time that he appears in your videos. Oh, thank you. That's very nice. Here, you read one about me. Fear Crawler's voice sucks. Someone should shove his microphone up his ass. And we're done reading comments for now. Enjoy the video. Have you ever read personal accounts of people from the past who have experienced something traumatic? I'm sure you have. In history class, it seemed like all we did was read personal accounts or testimonies from people from World War I and World War II. Reading testimony or true accounts of traumatic events makes it easier for people in present times to understand what they went through, and to sympathize, I guess. I remember reading true accounts from old people who were evacuated to the farmlands during World War II. All I can say is that I'm glad I wasn't born in their time. In my attic, I found a box full of written personal past accounts going all the way back to when slavery was legal in America. What was strange about this box was how it just appeared in my attic, because my attic has always been empty and unused. The only reason I even went up in my attic was because I needed to find the holes in my roof where water was leaking through. The holes were also causing a draft. When I saw the box sitting there, I became curious. I soon found myself sitting there reading the paper testimonies I found inside. They were all titled, The Testimonies of Freedom. The first one I picked up was dated back to 1865 when Abraham Lincoln had abolished slavery in the US. The testimony was from a soldier who fought on the side of the North. Here is his testimony. We had won the Civil War and Abraham Lincoln had finally managed to abolish slavery. No man or woman or child should ever have to experience being a slave. I remember seeing slaves as a little boy. It used to torment my heart. The inhumane practices of slavery were disgusting. How men and women, those who should be our fellow brothers and sisters, were treated as property. It was ungodly. I remember traveling down a field on my way home to a new life after the war. It was strange. Slavery had ended, but I could see slaves working in this field. I stopped my horses and shouted out to them, You're no longer slaves. You're all free. There was an uncomfortable silence, and I could see some of them wanted to come with me, but the others stopped them and made them return to their work. They had no master. There was no one telling them what to do. There was no one making them slaves. Had they done this to themselves, I thought? I asked one of them what was going on. He told me that a great evil roams the land. It eats and survives on freedom, which has made them resort to remaining as slaves working the field. This evil wasn't human. But what kind of evil survives on someone's freedom? What kind of evil forces the victim to limit their own freedom to the points of slavery? I stayed on this field trying to help some of the slaves free themselves. As I did this, the scene around us began to change. We all started seeing deceased loved ones who had passed a long time ago. This wasn't an hallucination. We were all seeing the faces and bodies of our deceased friends and family members, but something about their appearances was off. Something was twisted and sinister. They asked us if we wanted freedom from everything. Some of the slaves accepted, and I saw with my own eyes what these resurrected loved ones were. They were the evil that roamed the land, that consumed freedom. They offered death as the ultimate freedom, because in death you are free from all debt, responsibility, and learning. I myself had been infected, and I joined the other slaves on the field doing slaves' work and limiting my freedom in every way to keep those creatures at bay. I couldn't believe what I had just read. It sounded so unbelievable. But the next testimony was even more extreme. 
It was from a World War II Allied Forces soldier who was trying to liberate people from concentration camps. It read, The Nazis were losing the war, and we were all trying our best to liberate the prisoners inside the concentration camps. I can't even begin to describe the horrendous conditions we witnessed when we entered. Disease. Torture. Famine. Most of the prisoners gladly came to us for aid during the rescue, but there were some who wouldn't leave the camps. They kept telling us that they needed to remain imprisoned inside, that their own freedom needed to remain limited. They also kept muttering, I have got to keep those creatures at bay, or they will take me. And at first I didn't understand it. They kept talking about some creature that fed off human freedom, and the only way to keep it from coming was by reducing one's own freedom. So in that sense, being a prisoner in a German concentration camp was perfect for keeping something like that away. But I didn't listen. I assumed their ramblings were simply a byproduct of the torture and starvation that they had endured. In the end, we pulled them out of the concentration camps and essentially forced them to be free. A few days after we had taken them to a medical facility to recover, those same people began to vanish. I don't know what to make of any of this, but every now and then, they appear to me. Only, something about their appearance is different. All they ever ask me is, if I want to be free from all of this. I do want to be free from all of this. Then the last one I read was the most disturbing. It was from a police officer who discovered a house used for human trafficking. The testimony read, There are days as a police officer my faith in humanity goes right out the window. It was the year 2000 and I had discovered a house that was being used for human trafficking. I was disgusted seeing all those male and female victims inside. How could any human being be so cruel? The most shocking part was the identity of their captors. The ones who had organized this diabolical project was their own parents, their relatives, their loved ones. They begged me to listen to them, that they would help me to understand why they had done this. They kept telling me that they had no choice but to make their children, siblings, and friends into victims of human trafficking, that their freedom needed to be limited as much as possible. They began talking about aliens, that they fed off of the freedom of humans, that this was the only way to save them. I called for backup and the house was raided within 30 minutes. All of the victims were taken to either hospitals or psychiatric clinics due to their fragile mental states. Even though every one of those victims was under 24-hour surveillance, they had all vanished without a trace sometime that night. The next morning, I found a box in my apartment that wasn't there before. I've lived alone since my wife divorced me, and she has our boy most of the time. This box was full of testimonies and personal accounts from people who have some experience dealing with these supposed creatures who survive off of human freedom. Not long after the box appeared, our son started seeing his grandparents. But they had been dead for five years. They kept asking him whether or not he wanted to be free. And when I saw my deceased parents somehow alive and trying to make my son accept their form of freedom, I immediately took him away from them. My wife didn't know what to do. They both came to live with me. I had to start limiting my son's freedom bit by bit to keep those creatures at bay. I now understood why the human trafficking house was made. I have no choice but to take my son's life and then my own. My wife can carry on living. I couldn't believe what I had just read. I have a feeling that these testimonies have been read before. It's like these creatures collect testimonies to give to present victims. It's like they're mocking me. Like they want me to know about them and to know that they are coming for me. Right now, I can hear my daughter laughing at Bundy, our pet dog, rolling around in the garden. He died last year. It started. Oh, 
Hey, there's another one about me. Would you like to read it? No.